Hello, I'm Graham Fitch and I'm bringing you this video demonstration on pedalling from Steinway Hall in London. And this complements my article in issue 84 of Pianist Magazine. I'm going to be talking now about finger pedalling and how we might pedal the music of Bach and other Baroque composers and the classical composers, the early classical composers, Haydn and Mozart. So let's start off by just reminding ourselves that Bach didn't have any mechanism for sustaining the sounds that he made on his harpsichord or on his clavichord or of course on the organ. So everything had to be done by touch and by articulation and articulation is one of the most important things that we can we need to remember when we're playing Baroque music. Um, some people say do we use the pedal in Bach or are we not allowed to? I don't think it's a very easy question to to answer, certainly not, we can't give a black and white yes or no answer to it and it's not, I don't think it's my job to convince you one way or the other but I would like to show you how you can use finger pedaling for making the music uh, harmonically expressive and I'll show you what I mean in just a second. Finger pedaling really is the technique of overlapping with the fingers themselves. If you look at some of the music of uh, the French composers, Francois Couperin in particular, he would tend to notate this very carefully. So if you look at the score of Les Barricades Mysterieuses from the Sixth Orderer, I'll play a little bit of it now, as he notated it, um, you'll notice that I'm hanging on to everything with my fingers. And... Now I don't need to use any pedal for that because my fingers are sustaining the notes of the harmonies. I'm going to try, so I've not actually done this before, let me try not doing that. Let me try just playing the notes without overholding them. Oh, it's hard to do. It just sounds very wrong, doesn't it? It sounds and feels very wrong. So if you, I'll just do it in slow motion so you can see. So I'm only tending to pick up the notes as I need them again and clinging onto everything with my fingers. Now Bach and the Germanic composers didn't bother to do that because first of all it's very difficult to write, it's very difficult to notate and he just assumed that players would do that. Let's look at the beginning of the E minor partita, that's partita number six. If I play it as it's written from uh, maybe 19th century eyes, it would sound like this and nobody would think of doing it this way. Certainly no harpsichord player and no, no real pianist would think of doing this. That's ridiculous. <laughs> what we do do and what we should do is we can pedal it and some of the great pianists in the world do so and some don't. <laughs> what, what, if you're not going to pedal it, you have to finger pedal it. Let me show you. I'm holding on. Do you see what I did there? I held on to the notes of the chord as I spread. And then... Which gives that harmonic effect. Notice in the second bar, there was one note that I didn't hang on to. Uh, it was a passing note. Let me do it wrong now. Um, do you hear? That G is a passing note, so I wouldn't hang on to that. Now if you look at the next series of notes, we've got broken harmonies. Okay, now what we can do, we can if we like, and if the acoustical situation where we're playing happens to be dry, hang on a little longer. You could even, if you really wanted to do this. What I'm doing there is just holding on a little longer. What I like to do in those sorts of situations is to start off with maybe two or three notes held and then lift them progressively so that they release one after the other rather than suddenly. Let's look a little bit now at the C minor prelude from book one of the 48. Often I get asked, should I pedal this? Should I not pedal it? 
you can pedal it if you like, but you have to do it extremely carefully and not full pedals. We might touch the pedal on the, perhaps on the first beat. Let me show you. I think this is the boring way of doing it where everything comes out sounding the same. Even if I play it really rhythmically, you know, after a few bars of that, I think the, the jangle is enough to upset sensitive ears. So what we might do is to overlap a little bit, the, perhaps the first beat, and then not that beat. If I were to do that in slow motion, did you hear how my fingers just overheld just a little bit the first couple of notes? We could do that a little longer if we wanted to in this bridge passage later. Did you notice what I did? Hold, I held over these notes a little longer and then not those, uh, the later ones in the bar. All of these things are possible. And often Bach will simply not write any of this. Sometimes composers do write the, the Goldberg aria. is written out. If you look at your score there, you've got notes that are held on, written out. But very often in Bach, he doesn't do that. And we can certainly use little bits of pedal if we want. I would suggest, in, if you're going to use pedal in Bach, consider using touch pedal, which is just little dabs of pedal, tiny little dabs. It's barely, barely noticeable. It just gives a little bit of extra resonance to the sound. Um, certainly you can. But actually here, I find that I want to do that with my fingers. So that's finger pedaling in Bach. Let's look a little bit at finger pedaling in the classical composers. And I'm going to take as my example, two uh, examples from Mozart's K332 F major sonata. Uh, the one that begins like this. Now, looking at the left hand, if I were to pedal it, because I'm noticing I've got a broken chord here in an Alberti, typical Alberti pattern there. Let's try it with some pedal and just see how that sounds. It's already uh, offending my ear. It's much too much resonance. So if I do it with no pedal at all and just normal kind of legato downstairs, uh, I don't think I'd like that much either. Let me try. I just find that a bit too clattery. Uh, the left hand is just too intrusive, especially in this very resonant part of the piano. So what I can do is to overhold the bass note. What I'm doing there is just overholding the bass note. There you go. Do you see what I'm doing? Not lifting up my fifth finger. I can go further. I could not lift up my third finger either or my thumb. See what I'm doing there? I'm actually managing to hold on to all three notes. So which one would I do? Well, it would depend on the acoustic of the room and the piano, the size of the piano, whether it was a dry piano or a resonant piano. So if we look a little bit at the second movement now, even more reason not to touch the pedal, because if I were to pedal through these, these rather lovely ornaments, it just makes it very romantic. I think there may be some of you that quite like that. For me, it's a little unstylistic. <laughs> it belongs uh, a few decades after that sound world belongs later. So 
what I'll do. Just with finger overlaps, what I'm going to do, just before I leave you, I'm going to show you how you might add a dab of pedal. Perhaps let me see where I might want to do this. There. There. Touch, a tiny touch. So that's finger pedaling. Join me soon when I'll be talking about more advanced pedaling, um, half pedal, flutter pedaling, vibrating pedal. Thank you for joining me.